What's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fork Guide, another episode of the Guides Network. As you can tell by my attire, it is not playing around. It has flat gotten cold around here. That means fall and water temps. That means the bite's going to change. And one of the techniques that is uh, one of the most proven and dependable uh, techniques for giant trophy bass over the years is going to be to throw a jig in cold water out here on Lake Fork. It works really well all across the country as well and it's probably the most widely accepted consistent big bass technique throughout the winter months starting in the fall which is where we are right now. So today let's get into it. So when you start looking for jigs and looking to shop jigs on the market, one thing you gotta be aware of, there is a lot of different head designs, a lot of different models. So one of the things that I wanna talk to you about today is, is which head design I choose, why I choose it. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that everything that we're gonna talk about today, you can find at sixcentsfishing.com. Hey, when you go over there, be sure you punch in that code, your Lake Fork Guide, you'll get a 10% discount on all orders. Now, the jig design that I use is gonna be the hybrid jig from Six Cents. And there's a very good reason why I picked this jig over all others. Uh, there's a lot of jigs out there that have flare style heads. You got football head jigs, uh, the old Arky style jigs. Uh, those jigs are really good at hooking a fish in the top of their mouth. Uh, this jig right here has a semi-flat design on the bottom. Hopefully that will show up for you. But the main thing is when you're picking a jig, you want to get the jig that is the most weedless and snag free that you can while still having a head that has more width than it has height. Okay, the reason that is is because as that jig comes out of a fish's mouth, if that jig is longer this way than it is this way, when that jig comes out of the mouth, that jig's going to want to turn, you're going to catch that fish in the corner of the mouth. And you're not going to get a whole lot of bites sometimes when you're fishing really cold water, post frontal conditions freezing water, the bass are more lethargic, so every bite really has to count for you. So you want a jig that's gonna help you get that fish hooked in the top portion of the mouth somewhere. And if you really look at the design of the hybrid jig, it has almost a triangular shape, but it's wider on the bottom. So that jig is still gonna come out somewhere between this angle and this angle as it comes out of that fish's mouth. That's all it can do. And a lot of times it comes out dead flat, hooks them right in the nose. But literally, I mean, I hate to say every time, but it feels like every single time, to the best of my memory, when I hook a jig on this hybrid jig, when I hook a fish on this hybrid jig, it's somewhere in the top portion of the mouth. Really solid hookup. Lose very few fish on this jig right here. On top of that, with the different angles and the triangular shape that it has to it, it comes through the cover as good as any jig I've ever put in my hands. I've never fished a more weedless jig than this jig right here. All right, so now you know which jig I'm gonna go grab. The next thing you need to know is what do I do, what adjustments do I make to the jig right out of the package? And there are just a couple of adjustments. Uh, in the wintertime, I wanna make my jigs as small and compact as I possibly can. I'll, I don't wanna give that fish any extra bait to grab a hold of. Guys, these fish will bite kind of finicky in the wintertime. They don't always, you know, just choke the bait. So I want the jig to be as tight and compact as I possibly can to keep those fish from having something on the back end to just barely grab a hold of and maybe miss the hook. So we're gonna make that jig as short and compact as we can. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my jig, I'm gonna bunch my skirt up, and I'm gonna get right up, right below the bend of the hook and trim all that skirt material off. As you can see right there, we got that nice and tight to the bend of the hook. All right, the second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my weed guard trimmed to the back barb of the hook. Not the point, but I want my weed guard to be even with the back barb. Six Cents actually does a really good job of having this thing pretty much on the money right out of the package, kind of like they always do. If you wanna know why I fish so much Six Cents products, it's because they come out of the package ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna look right there. That, I mean, that's, I mean, not even a 16th of an inch. That's a really small fraction over the bar. We're gonna go ahead and leave this one just like it is. I will tell you one thing. If you're 
weed guard sticks out past your barb a good ways, hey, there's nothing that it's helping you protect. Once it gets past that barb, there's nothing for it to protect from you hanging up. There's nothing that's going to help you make it more weedless. In fact, the shorter you trim your weed guard while still covering the point in the barb, the act it'll actually make the jig more weedless because it will stiffen up the weed guard the shorter it gets and it'll make it more snag resistant uh, in that situation. So you definitely want to take time to take your weed guard and trim it right there to the back barb of the hook. All right, we went ahead and trimmed that little extra off, and now you can see it's just almost dead even with the back barb of the hook. By the way, if you guys heard me cut the hard plastic weed guard easy as I could, these are the six cents titanium scissors. These things are unbelievable. Cut through braid. I mean, you can cut braid on loose line. You can cut weed guards, no problem. Holly suggests the scissors. I know, this is a six cents like paid advertisement basically, but it's because their stuff is just that good. All right, now let's talk about trailers. And there's two style of trailers that I'm gonna use in the wintertime. The first one's gonna be a beaver style bait that doesn't really swim. The legs just kinda trail behind it, not a lot of kick to it. Uh, this is the bait that I'm gonna use as a trailer whenever I'm wanting a faster fall. So if I'm fishing a half ounce, three quarter ounce jig, and I'm wanting that bait to fall really fast, this is the bait that I'm gonna use. Also too, when it gets extremely cold and I, I don't want as much action on my bait, I don't want the bait to be kicking all around everywhere. I wanna prevent, present a more subtle bait once it's on the bottom. That is also when I'll choose the beaver bait. This is actually the six cents prawn that will be released in the month of December. As soon as they come out, highly recommend getting some of these. I've already caught a bunch of fish, both as a jig trailer and as a standalone Texas rig bait on the six cents prawn. And the same goes for this bait right here. This one's gonna be the six cents stroker crawl. Now this one I'll use, this is kind of my standard jig trailer. This is the one I'm gonna use most of the time, really. Uh, it's, it has a great swimming action, kind of a twin tail grub look to it. Has two legs that kick really well as the bait falls. Also, thin appendages on those legs mean a lot of flowing action when the jig is sitting more or less still, even with just a little wind current or just a slight tremble of your hand. Uh, these little thin legs on here are gonna give that bait some undulation, some action that's gonna draw bites while your jig's sitting more or less still. And that can be a really big deal, guys, to have a bait that has action on it. That's one of the advantages of these jigs is when that skirt gets down there in the water, even while that bait's sitting still, that skirt's moving undulating, pulsing. It's giving the bait movement without movement. So the bait is moving while the bait is sitting still and that's a really big deal. And that's why this is my day in day out go-to jig trailer uh, most of the time because I'm really, really, really a real big fan, especially in wintertime jig fishing, of baits that have a lot of flow, a lot of movement to them at a very slow rate of speed as far as your retrieve goes. Because a lot of the times, the longer you can keep that jig in that fish's face, the higher your percentage of getting bit goes up. So now let's talk about color selection. Now, you've probably uh, seen the two colors I'm holding up. You know, in the wintertime, these will be my only two colors. Now, as we start right now during the fall period, there's still a little bit of that shallow jig bite going on. And we're going to talk about presentation and area here in just a minute. Uh, but it, as we start in the fall, I will tend to go to the greens and browns. Uh, this color right here is going to be craw... Uh, this is grass mutant. I apologize. This is grass mutant. Also, really, really, really like crawfish drone in the fall. Both of them are green and brown based jig color. And then, of course, just a perfect color to match that green and brown is going to be gill dust in the stroker crawl or the prawn. Uh, when those baits, they are getting released in December, like I said, look for gill dust. That's gonna be a great color. You could also use a green pumpkin. Any type of color like that would work very well with the green and brown jigs as well. So I'm gonna start in the fall with my greens and browns. And then as we get colder, we get on into December, I'm gonna switch over to the old tried and true, black and blue. Everybody throws it, everybody knows it, but there's a reason it's still probably the most popular jig color on the market. Black and blue flat out catches them, especially in the cold time of year. Uh, there's just no better color, in my opinion, to throw when the water gets to its coldest that it gets of all year than black and blue. Of course, Six Sense has got you covered there with both the prawn and the stroker crawl coming in black with blue flake. You know, once the water starts getting really cold, like down towards the 50 degree mark and below that, I'm gonna throw black and blue just about all the time. The only time I'll switch over to green and brown is A, if I've been getting bit a lot and all of a sudden it stops, I'll throw the green and brown a couple times to try and get a couple more key bites. Or if I find myself in unusually clear water uh, and for some, and I'm trying the black and blue and it's not working, but the water's really, really clean, then I'll go over to a more natural color with the greens and browns. And then one more little key 
key tip on your black and blue a little bit of little subtle color variation I'm a pretty basic guy when it comes to colors I stick by the standards I don't really get crazy on unique colors but this one's kind of a one-off for me uh, works worked really well for me for a lot of years now uh, I like to take a black and blue jig and have a little bit of orange on the back side of it. Not a lot. I don't want the whole jig to be mixed with it. I just want about eight strands, seven, eight strands of orange in the belly of my skirt on my black and blue jig. Now, here's a beautiful thing. You can go to sixcentsfishing.com. You can buy their color called Cajun Crawl. Simply pluck the chartreuse strands out of it, and that's exactly what that jig is right there. And I've caught, I mean, don't know if y'all can see the teeth marks from there. I'm sure you can't, but... This jig's been bit, we'll just say that. All right guys, so those are my jig color and type selections for fall and winter. Now let's talk about the rod. The rod is so important. So many of these bites in post frontal conditions and just cold water in general are gonna be so subtle. Uh, you almost won't even feel them, they're gonna be so light. So it's very, very important to have the lightest, most sensitive rod that you can while still having the power that you need to set that big hook. You know, these jigs got a big beefy hook on them, so you need a big rod to drive that big hook home, and you also need a big rod to control that fish. When he's out here in all this flooded timber, we got it, this heavy cover, flooded root system that are exposed on the edge of creek channel bends, all that kind of stuff. If you're fishing shallow and you're around grass, boy, you really need the big rod then. And that's kind of a hard thing to find, a big rod that is extremely light and sensitive Unless you go look up the Century Series and you check out the 7.7 Heavy. Uh, I say all that, guys, to tell you that this is hands down. If you watch this channel, you know that I don't say this very often. I don't say, hey, this is hands down. the best. This is hands down the best jig rod I've ever put in my hand. It has the best combination of light, sensitive, great feel. It also has... Plenty of backbone, plenty of power. I've boat flipped eight pounders on this rod right here. I mean, it's got a lot of torque. It feels so light in your hands, it feels like you're gonna break it. But I can tell you this, I'm very hard on my gear between how many days a year that I fish and the fact that being a fishing guide, I usually have at least two, usually three people using my equipment at all times. My equipment gets put to the test as much as anybody. On top of that, we got big fish, big heavy cover, all that. Like, I put a lot of stress on my equipment and I have never ever broken a single blank on one of these Sensory Series rods. So uh, can't recommend those enough. They are a little bit more high end. They run in the $250 range. Um, but if you can swing it, the rod is very, very important for jig fishing and I highly recommend this one right here. So for line, it's always gonna be one line choice. 20 pound fluorocarbon at all times. Uh, I like the silence of the fluorocarbon. Braid makes too much noise for these slow, subtle techniques. Uh, I like the fact that fluorocarbon has less stretch than mono, um, all that stuff. So fluorocarbon is hands down the line choice for me when I'm jig fishing in the fall and winter. Uh, on reels, pretty simple there too. This is a loose hypermag. I also like the loose tournament MB. A plethora of loose reels that you could use for this. The main thing is make sure you get one that's in at least a seven to one gear ratio reel. Uh, when these fish bite this jig, sometimes they'll get on an aggressive bite and they'll knock slack in it and you gotta pick that slack up real quick. And then a lot of times you're fishing close to the boat. You set that hook on that fish and he starts coming up. He's basically coming right at you and you need to be able to pick up that line in a hurry to keep up with that fish so he doesn't get slack line on you and end up throwing your jig uh, so must 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 be a high speed gear ratio reel like a seven to one or even higher than that uh, is what i recommend okay so let's talk about the areas for a minute and this is going to be a little bit complicated because we have two different areas that we're going to focus on uh, first right now uh, the water temps are cooling but they're not just freezing cold we're not down around that 50 degree mark we still got some water on the lake in the 60s most of it's in the 50s now uh, but that will fluctuate we got some warmer weather coming at the end of next week i believe and so the water temps will climb back into the 60s i'm sure and as long as that's the case there will be a shallow small profile almost finesse jig bite uh, happening and, and that's really where this green and brown jig comes in and again making sure And again, making sure that we're trimming it nice and compact. You guys can see how small that jig is. That's exactly what you want. And where you're gonna wanna flip this is you're gonna wanna get into these coves and pockets in these creek arms out here, and you're gonna wanna find flooded vegetation or aquatic vegetation offshore, and you're gonna wanna fish the holes and the edges of that vegetation. What happens is baby crawfish have molted their shells and they're developing their adult, shell, their adult shells this time of year. Uh, they are green and brown in color. Wonder why I'm using a green and brown jig. They have underdeveloped claws. They're a little bit defenseless right now. And bass know this, like bass, 
see these baby crawfish that are in between shells and it's just a little protein pack snack pack for them. They love them. Uh, they, they feed up on them big time in the fall. This is a relatively seldom used pattern. It doesn't get a lot of play out here, but it works every year for me. Uh, there's always fish up there that'll eat a small green and brown jig up shallow around flooded vegetation or hydrilla or coontail. Just find the patches, find the edge, flip to those edges once you locate them and fish that jig. Not too slow. You can actually flip it in like a, basically like a Texas rig bite. You flip it around the grass, shake it a little bit, reel it in, flip it to the next patch of grass. It's a really simple technique, uh, but really, really effective at the same time. The other area that we're already starting to fish with jigs a little bit right now, and we will continue to fish uh, even more and more as the winter goes on. Once we get into sure enough winter, uh, this will be solely where I'm fishing my jigs. It's going to be on mid-depth to deep creek channel bends. Uh, wherever the creek channel before the lake was built flowed and, and winded, every time that creek would make a bend, the water would flow and put pressure on the outside of that bend, washing it out and making that a steep drop-off bank, almost like a miniature bluff wall, if you will, under the surface. Uh, these fish love to use these creek channels as highways and these bins that have the deepest sharpest drops on them gather the bigger fish throughout winter time the colder it gets the more of them will get in there the other beautiful thing is as you see all this timber behind me uh, the root systems overhang these creek channel bins so basically what you got is you got the sharpest break in an area the deepest drop off in an area and you got little mini brush piles stacked up hanging over the edge of them now, if you found that on some offshore structure where you had a bluff wall ledge out in the middle of the lake and you had brush piles hanging over the edge, you'd be like, man, we hit the jackpot. Well, the good Lord's kind of made that jackpot for you out here. Uh, and it's important to take advantage of it because some of my bigger fish that I catch every year come in the wintertime down in these root systems on these outside bends of these creek channels. So you want to look for the areas where your creek channel has a big sharp swing in it. Go graft that. Find the sharper ones that have just a dead bluff wall drop off and then locate those root systems wherever those stumps are and crawl that jig through the root systems. In fact, we're gonna get up right now and show you exactly how we do that. All right guys, so today we're actually having to hide from the wind a little bit. Uh, this is not a creek channel bin that I would expect to catch a fish on or anything like that. This is not a place that I would normally be fishing, but we're gonna use it as an example today because we're having to hide from some high winds. So as you guys can see, we got some stumps out here. So let's just say that these stumps or on the edge of a creek bend. Uh, one of the most important things that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna make sure that you get this jig well past those stumps so it doesn't fall down right on top of them. You actually want this jig to hit the ground back behind those stumps. So I'll make a long pitch, lands well behind it, strip a little line so that the bait falls straight down. Okay, once the bait's on the bottom, now this is a little bit shallower here so it didn't take very long to fall. Sometimes uh, you'll be fishing a little bit deeper, it'll take longer to fall. Right now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dragging up. I'm already in some brush or some branches or something like that. You just wanna drag that bait, moving your rod up along the bottom as slow as you can. The only time you're not gonna move your rod up is gonna be if the wind is in extreme condition and it's blowing a lot of slack in your line. And then sometimes you have to drag your rod down to the side to still feel your bait in all the wind. But the main thing is, every time you drag your bait over a root system, over a branch, you're gonna feel your bait kinda catch. And then as soon as it starts to pop over, you want to point your rod back down so that the bait falls straight down into the root system. We've got our bait catching a little bit here, so we're going to drag, drag, drag. As soon as it pops, we want to drop it so it fall, falls on a slack line and goes straight down into the root system. That's the big deal on this creek channel retrieve. you got to get your jig down in those roots and work it up and out, up and out, up and out. You know, one other way, especially right now, the lakes are a little bit low. And so one other way that you can identify these creek bends is by Paying attention to the timber that's sticking out of the water. The flooded timber, some of it's broke off, some of it's still standing tall. But pay attention to the size, shape, and type of timber that is an area. And even without looking at a map, because these maps aren't always perfect on these creek bends. So even without looking at a map, you can use the timber to identify the precise angle of the creek bend and where it turns. And the way that you're going to do that is what you're looking for is big live oak stumps. Out here in Northeast Texas, uh, these biggest trees, the biggest circumference trees are gonna be the big old live oak trees. Now those trees, they hold their leaves longer throughout the year than any other tree in these woods do. What that means is they require more water. So they always grow right on the edge of a water source. And the ones that grow the biggest always grow right on the edge of the creek channel. And you can literally look at a field of stumps and you'll see a row of big live oak stumps winding around well, that's the edge. That's the line of the creek channel as it winds through that creek. Uh, 
so you want to pay attention to that and really take note of that as you're going back into these areas look for these big live oak stumps to help you identify the exact precise turns and angles of these creek bends that'll help you be more precise this this bite is one of the most precise bites that you'll have all year you're literally trying to hit a spot about this big on the edge of a bend and it's got to be right you got to put the jig right past it and drag i mean it's got to be perfect so the more precise you can get uh, the better you'll be and being able to identify those stumps on the edge of those bends will help you be extremely precise well there you go guys that's everything that i know about jig fishing in the winter time hey as with every video that we make my most sincerest hope is that this helps some of you guys catch more and bigger fish whether i ever meet you whether i ever see you on a guide trip whether you ever you know participate in anything that we got going on that doesn't matter to me not one bit what i want the most out of this is i want you to catch more and bigger fish and uh i would love to see the pictures if it does work send me some pictures hit me up on facebook instagram youtube TikTok, linkedin you can find me everywhere under your lake fork guide send me those pictures of these big fish if these techniques help you if you're liking them leave me a comment down below and let me know when they work for you because that is the most rewarding thing for me is knowing that I'm helping people catch more and bigger fish. That is my life's purpose. That is my passion. And that's what I'm trying to do with every piece of content that I make. So that being said, get over to sixcentfishing.com, get you some jigs, some rods, some trailers. Uh, be sure you enter that code, your Lake Fork Guy, get your 10% discount. And hey, we sincerely appreciate each and every one of you so much. And we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.